Good morning, guys and ladies. Um, this is your art teacher, and this is a lesson with third grade today about line and line direction and how to use line to create either still or, or a calm feeling to your artwork or um, if you want it to have a lot of action or movement. So the first thing we need to review is some line types and these line types um, can make artworks feel calm, still, and peaceful and those specific types of lines are lines that are vertical or lines that travel horizontal so if you see um, a lot of objects or items in artworks that are vertical or they're across um, the scene that tends to make uh, landscapes or any sort of image like that feel more calm or peaceful. Whereas if you see artwork that is filled with these types of lines, um, these lines make artworks feel active or show motion or movement. So anytime you see lines that are wavy or curved or spiral, um, things that look kind of jagged or zigzagged in artworks that will show motion or movement in uh, your art or the art that you're looking at. So with that we have a couple of um, art examples to look at here and this first one is by C.W. Jeffries and it's called Wheat Stacks on the Prairies and it was painted in 1907. So if you look at this painting, you know, you have to ask yourself, does it feel like calm and peaceful or does it feel like there's a lot of action or movement in it? You know, does it look like there's wind blowing or does it look really still? Okay. So when you're looking at these, um, you can see there are, you know, there's curves in the sky. You can see the curved uh, lines of the clouds there. We can see some diagonal lines on the haystacks. And, you know, there's even some shadows there behind the haystacks that could show uh, some depth. Um, so overall, you know, you've got those two specific areas in this painting that you can look at, but then if you kind of back up from it and look at the whole painting overall, you know, those haystacks, they are kind of standing up vertically, okay? If you look closely at the foreground, you know, the brush strokes that he used to create the, the the hay field or the wheat field, um, they're all pointing up vertically also. And then you have this really strong horizon line in the background that kind of really helps to separate the sky from the ground and that's the horizon. But, you know, with that being said, you know, even with the curves in, this, in the clouds in the sky and the shadows in the haystack, I personally feel like this painting is pretty calm and peaceful. You know, if I were there in real life sitting in the field, you know, I kind of envision kind of a warm sunny afternoon, not really any breeze, just like one of those perfect summer days that we wished we had every day. So that's how I see those types of lines in this particular painting. So if we scoot over and we look at this painting, this one is by Winslow Homer and it's called Hurricane Bahamas and I find it ironic that there is a hurricane painting in here seeing as we've just had one kind of come through the Gulf Coast there and it's supposed to bring us rains this weekend but it was a watercolor it is a watercolor on paper somewhere around 1910 so boys and girls think about that that's over a hundred years ago and you can see the hurricane, it's called Hurricane Bahamas. 
So if we look at this particular painting, you know, first thing I notice is those palms are blowing in the, in the wind. Those palms are blowing in the breeze. And the reason I know that is because all of the palms are kind of pointing to the right. So this one is going to the right. This one's kind of to the right, to the right, to the right. And if you notice, even though they are subtly curved, they're also diagonal. You know, that one's kind of pointing downward. That one's kind of pointing upward. This one has a strong diagonal there and there. Same thing on, on these. They're all kind of diagonal. This one's got a bend in it, so we know the wind is really pushing that palm leaf, you know, around to the back side of that palm tree. Same thing with these. They're all curving towards the right in the painting. So that indicates to me that obviously there's a lot of wind going on when he uh, painted or painted from memory this, this particular watercolor. And then if you look up in the sky, you know, we've got a lot of those same types of curves that we saw in the other painting, but there's a, a really main difference. The overall of this painting is kind of gray and dark, whereas the other one was really light. So when we see gray in photographs or paintings or whatever, and it has to do with kind of a seasonal thing, we automatically think, well, that's probably stormy weather. So, you know, that's um, reinforced by this really dark cloud up here across the top. And even when I pointed that out, my finger kind of went bump, bump, bump. So that's kind of, you know, that curved line area. You've got other curves back here in the background. And you can see some of the wind is really pushing the water forward um, back there in the background of this particular painting as well. He's also got a lot of subtle diagonals in the foreground. And I know that those are roofs on houses. And we're sitting here going, well, of course, those are diagonals because that's a, he's showing us the roof on a house. Well, you're right, but it's also reinforcing the fact that he's got these diagonal angles against these diagonal angles against that curving background. So overall, there's a lot of action and movement from these lines, if you remember, um, in this particular painting. So this one overall, I feel has more action or movement in it than the first one did. So I would say this is much, uh, it kind of creates some, you know, like kind of nervousness or anxiety in me a little bit when I look at that because I think, well, what would that have been like to go through? You know, had I been in the Bahamas during a hurricane, you know, what would that have been like to experience? So it kind of makes me a little nervous when I look at a painting like that as compared to the first one with the haystacks. So, that is two examples of how artists use weather, or use different line types to show different types of weather. And from here, what you can do is, um, in one of the uh, slideshows, you can review some of the uh, different types of weather. There are photographs of different weather scenes in that Google Slides. Uh, attached to this Google Classroom. So I would recommend that you check those out and then on some scratch paper or a sketchbook just kind of play around with how you can use those vertical and horizontal lines to create you know kind of a calm still peaceful scene and then keeping in mind about the wavy you know curved and zigzag lines how can you use those in a landscape scene to create motion or movement. It doesn't have to be extreme weather. I mean, it could just be a breezy day or it could be a snowy day or a sunny day or whatever. But you choose. That's where, you know, you as an artist get to make those decisions. I would just like to see you use these types of lines to illustrate that. So this was your art teacher, and I hope you guys uh, have a great rest of the day.